Etsy is not for artists. And in today's video, I'm going to explain why and how to navigate this if you are an artist trying to make a lot of money. My name is Dylan Jarris, and this video is definitely going to ruffle some feathers. In the last year, I have helped over 2,000 Etsy sellers scale their businesses to a total of over $10 million in revenue. And many of these Etsy sellers consider themselves artists. So if you are an artist and you are trying to make a lot of money on Etsy, you have to go about this in a very different way. Etsy is not an art gallery where you can simply showcase your creativity. I mean, it can be if you want, but you're likely not gonna make a lot of money that way. If you are an artist, I'm going to teach you how to market your products for Etsy. Before we get started, make sure to leave a comment below and say checklist if you would like our 16 step checklist to grow your Etsy shop. These are 16 revenue generating activities that you can do in your Etsy shop. We will send it to you for free. All you have to do is comment below checklist so we know if you want it. We're going to split artists into two types. One is the type of artist that has a very strong following. They've already built a brand for themselves. The other type of artist is an artist without a following. Maybe no one knows who they are. Maybe they haven't quite made it yet. Another way to look at it is like artists that people will actually Google and try to find any of their current or their past work to purchase. And then there's artists where maybe their biggest fan is their mom. Nothing wrong with that, but different situations. And if you're in bucket number two, we have to take a different approach to Etsy. If you're in bucket number one, you already have a really large following and people are Googling you to find your work, then you might be you know, an up and coming Picasso and you could just start throwing your stuff up on Etsy and really just turn on the offsite ad so you get strong Google traffic and you might be set because there already is a high demand. But if you're an artist in bucket number two where you don't have a very strong following, people are not Googling to find your work, then we wanna follow follow these steps. It's just four steps, very straightforward. You can take action on these today. Number one, you've got to choose a priority, making money or making things that feed your soul. If you sit on the fence between these two things and are trying to do a little bit of that one, a little bit of that one. It's gonna be difficult for you to make the decisions necessary to get traction, and your shop might start to look a little confusing. Some people are worried that they won't enjoy their craft anymore if they prioritize making money. If you are feeling that fear, then I ask you to consider the alternative because you have to survive. So either you can survive making money, doing something you know you love, or you could survive doing something, a nine to five job that you kind of hate. And then maybe you spend that you know exhausted hour right before you go to bed at the end of the day, trying to enjoy that thing that you love. If you are willing to prioritize making money first, then this is going to give you options. One of those options is focusing more on the joy of the craft later on because you already have the financial breathing room to do so. Focusing on making money first will also help you build your brand much faster. And this is because we are going to make your designs more accessible to more people in a faster way. And this is going to build up your audience and your fan base who you can then leverage with a future product mix later on. And if you're an artist with maybe a room full of stuff, full of your work that really no one else besides you is enjoying, then I would ask, what is the purpose of this art? Are you truly fulfilled if no one ever sees it? So we have to prioritize for a period of time making money or just doing it for enjoyment. All right, number two, this might really make some people mad, but stop making art for yourself and consider making it for profitable customers with expensive taste. Yes, I just said that. And this might change the aesthetic of your art. But if you are truly an artist, you can adapt and you can be flexible. If anyone has the skill set to execute on expensive taste, it's going to be you. It's not going to be some 15 year old fooling around with mid journey. To do this, we gotta really consider where you get your inspiration from. I also recommend doing some polls on Instagram or in Facebook groups that have an audience that have you know maybe more expensive taste in home decor or maybe trending fashion outfit of the day groups and see if your target customer is drawn to what you have or maybe an alternative. So pay attention to what expensive brands these people shop with and what aesthetic they're drawn to because you might want to adapt your art and your aesthetic accordingly. If you're curious how I'm even able to speak on this, my entire background is corporate e-commerce 
and I was in the buying side of things. So there's an art and a science to that. And I worked for some big companies managing portfolios up to a hundred million dollars. And what I do with Etsy is I take these corporate e-commerce principles, apply them to Etsy. And that is why we see very consistent results. And now we have a company of over 25 people where we've helped over 2000 Etsy sellers just last year with their shops. So in working with these students, many of them were artists. And we found that when they stopped making things for themselves and instead they focus on customer first, product second, they see drastically different results. So consider making things for profitable customers instead of for yourself. So here's an example of a designer in the wedding fashion space. She submitted her shop for this video. And one thing I would say for this is I'm seeing a lot of more retro inspired silhouettes. One thing I would keep an eye on here is trends in the wedding space because this shop owner could be targeting a different type of customer. Maybe they could be targeting elopement brides. And I think she could actually be charging a lot more to this type of customer because a wedding is, you know, an event or occasion that you're spending a lot of money on. The price point of these shawls compared to the price point of what someone will spend on a dress, it's vastly different. A bit more premium feeling with different materials. Maybe it's more lace, maybe it's more pearls, rhinestones, maybe it's a little more dainty. She could do like gloves, uh, lace gloves that are, you know, very premium that go like up the arm. She could get into like wedding belts, wedding veils. There's so much more that this shop owner is capable of. And I think she could be targeting a wildly different wedding customer that allows her to command much higher pricing. Number three, we've got to check your pricing. If you have no demand, it simply doesn't warrant cream of the crop pricing. Yes, time is money. Your time is worth something, but you need to have a demand on your time, a demand for your output in order to be able to charge a lot. So supply and demand is real, even with art. If there is no demand for what you have to supply, we have to remember that in our pricing. What you've really got to do is actually drum up some demand on your own to even warrant that high, high pricing. This shop, you know, there's very little branding going on. There's no about section. There's no shop story or really any information to give us an idea of what is this person known for? Should we know who this is, right? What is the artist's name? Where are they from? This doesn't look like it is a really well-known artist with some major following, right? So what I would say here is we need to talk about pricing and what is their goal? They have no sales. How long have these listings been up? Looks like it's shipping from the United Kingdom. Really very little information information about the product. Unfortunately, this shop, you know, they could keep adding more and more listings with these same strategies and they still likely will not sell, unfortunately. So this is something where if this artist wants to make a lot of money on Etsy, we've got to drum up some demand. And the next thing we need to do if you're an artist is to turn your art into more functional and accessible items. So instead of just, you know, selling maybe eight by eight canvas prints that people can look at, consider selling art that people can use. If you are a brand new artist on Etsy, I recommend having every single thing in your shop being something that has purpose, utility, and functionality with it. I've worked with so many artists on Etsy and it has been a night and day difference. They'll go from making like one sale a month, maybe one sale every two months, to then making between eight and $13,000 per month. And now this depends on what the shop decided to sell. But for example, they would turn their art into a set of coasters or a tray, something like a pillow or bedding, or they might add words to one of their designs or patterns and they would turn that into a mug or a sweatshirt. This does not have to be turning your art into a print on demand product. That could also be making and shipping functional art pieces yourself. But I guarantee you will make more money if you combine art with something that has function and utility to it versus just art that is something people look at. If you are an artist and you've decided that you want to prioritize making money with your art, reach out. If you don't want to prioritize making money, keep doing your thing. But if you're serious about actually wanting to make a full-time income with your art, we'd love to talk to you and we can chat a little bit more and just see if we are the right people to help you do that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment below checklist if you would like our free 16 step checklist filled with tactical and practical practical action steps to grow your Etsy shop. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until now, I didn't really have many sales in my Etsy shop. Almost two months ago, I bought the course. I can see a steady growth increase in my views, especially in my conversion rate, which was very low before.